Greetings, YouTube. Danny Staten here on the Daily Dan blog. You know I love saying that. I'm here today with the Munsters comic book. It's at number 16 from 1968. It's a gold key. It's got the classic 12 cent on the cover. I love that. Yeah, check it out. Herman's blowing up a tire on a car. I could have got a better cover of that one that don't have him blowing up a tire, I suppose. But but it's the only one of these original monsters I've ever been able to find. And this one might be a key because it features the Dragula car, you know, that famous monsters racing car. So what do you think about this comic book, guys? It's a classic, right? Remember, I did them other two monsters. <laughs> yes, right. I checked out these Monsters comic books from 1997 where they tried to reimagine the old comic book series. And, well, you can watch them videos here on the Daily Dan blog in the playlist. Oh, my God. That's right. Them other two comic books kind of were a black and white dismal nightmare. Ugh. Uh, I was not happy with either one of them comic books, but I was really happy with the covers, and that's why I, I, I mainly buy the comic books, believe it or not. It's not for the book inside or whatever I'm talking about. The main reason I buy these comic books is because I do cover art for comic books. I love it, and I actually love it so much I decorate my walls with it. Comic book art. You can see them videos on Danny Steen channel and on the Daily Damn blog also. Oh, if I'm going to do this, I guess I'm going to need some help, and I should get some help from my cool friend who pat mccormick pat mccormick at the golden rage of tv everybody should go down and get that boy a sub that man has crazy talent That's the only way I could get away with the theme song. Thank you, Pat McCormick. All right, YouTube, I guess I've wasted enough time. This is already going to probably take forever. It's a long comic book. So let's bust up inside this bad boy and see how she looks on the inside. Oh, my goodness. You know you're going to get that right on the inside of one of these really cool comic books. You're going to get it where you can order all that big stuff, all that cool stuff, the little gambling machines, the joy buzzer for your hand, and my favorite, the big cardboard-ass submarine. Guaranteed if you put it in the swimming pool or in that river, you will sink and drown. It was made of cardboard. So let's get this comic book rolling when Herman Monster buys this new sports car he calls the Dragula. Him and Grandpa argue over, well, what's wrong with the old car? Well, we needed this new car. I bet this is a great new car. Check out the engine. So Grandpa and him, they get into a debate about the cars and they blast off. They decide to have them a big old race. Grandpa's car get a little over steam sometimes. Lily was worried. But they having this big race, but uh, Oh, Herman done beat out Grandpa in the race. That starts some major drama because they're planning this trip to Transylvania. And Grandpa's fussing because that car is too small. So they have a friendly little wager. That's right, a friendly little wager in the family. They're going to race to Transylvania in two separate cars. Lily and Herman going to take Dragula. And Grandpa's going to take whatever the hell old wreck thing this is. It don't even look like the one from the TV show much, does it? So in these big, beautiful, colored, full pages that barely have faded any over the time since 1968, and that's an old comic book, Herman Monster's rolling through the desert. They're racing. They're racing towards Transylvania. They're coming through Death Valley, and they're making a movie with some cowboys and Indians when Lily and Herman roll up on the movie being filmed. His wagons are circling up. So they decide to save the cowboys and attack the Indians. Why? Wow. This went off real good. No time for thanks, Sergeant. We were just trying to help. The director is so pissed. He's breaking stuff. Hey, check this out. Grandpa's being slick. He done took the shortcut. He went straight up. See his little line? He went straight up after all this, huh? He went straight, right? Oh, my God. And Grandpa ain't much of a driver, neither. He about killed that, that prospector. But then he finally ran up on some Eskimos. And now he's talking to the Eskimos. But guess what? Herman got to the Eskimos first. He found his own Eskimos. He talked them suckers into hooking his stuff up. He got the dogs. He's sledding across. 
The tundra? Hey, Jackie, they in Alaska. They dog sled and check it out. Ah, ah, it's Iron Dogger time. Check it out. Y'all know you're going to like that, Jackie. They iron dogger it all the way across. They're heading up to the straits. Ah, that's probably whatever where you live, right? Ah, and they're going to try to cross over into Russia from there. Ah, it looks like Grandpa has a plan. Yeah. Herman's running naked net with Grandpa. But Grandpa's car has bat wings and can take a little gliding flight and leaves Herman and Lily floating on the ice. It's slowly deteriorating. Yeah, I didn't know that damn car could fly. Why the hell ain't he been flying this whole time? Stupid shit. Yeah, that's the first thing in this story I didn't like too much is when his car sprung bat wings and blew away. And, and I was thinking, why didn't it fly the whole time? Bye, Herman, we're going to beat you. So this race could be over just because that car sprung wings. And, and that just kind of messed with me. This will be continued shortly. Because we're not just going to have one or two pages in the middle of this comic book. No, no, no. We're going to give you a bat time story because we really want to put some Batman stuff in our in our comic book. Oh, hold it where you can sit here and pause it and read through some Batman stuff in a Mustard's comic book. If you really want to. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. And I'll do this side real good too for you. And I know some people actually can... The comments, I want to read that stuff. Make sure y'all leave it on there long enough for me to pause it on down. So there you go, brothers. That's for you, dude. That's for you. Pause it on down. Read that shit. Okay, moving right along, we're going to get a sh a, sh a shocking spree, little brat bastard. Uh, look at this little kid. He looks like trouble. He's bothering his dad or his grandpa here. Let me see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's Papa. So I don't know if that's dad or grandpa. Papa can mean dad or grandpa. But but in this case, Papa looked like an old an old grandpa. He wants some money. Go to the store, get some clothes. Grandpa going to take him down and do some shopping for him. He don't like that idea. But uh, he going to throw the kid some money and let him go pick out his own clothes. Oh, in full panels, brought to you by the Daily Damn Blog. This story just sucks. Oh, I don't like this one too much. Little goofy kid went out and bought him some clothes. A little bit later, a specter appears and scares Grandpa up to death. He runs away freaky. When he comes back, there's a wolf man in the window. Ah, oh, it scares him again. And then and then he runs away. But when he comes back, Frankenstein's messing with him. He just can't take it. Monsters have run loose. Ah! Oh, when he comes back again, Dracula attacks him. And Dracula's sucking through. Grandpa's packing up his stuff when the kid says, oh, let me show you something before you leave there, Pops. And then he takes him back there and shows him all these really cool, nasty-ass costumes he's done bought. And he says, oh, you were the monster the whole time, huh? I think this kid's about to get that ass tore up. Ah, so, so Grandpa made him dress up in one of the little monster costumes and drag him down to the store and let him loose. He's looking like the hound from hell over here. He runs around scaring all the people. And, 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 and he grabs up the owner and the owner says, ah, oh, just work here, dude. Le monster, le monster. That's the guy you need to see. So they run over here and they start talking to the boss. And of course, it's Adolf Hitler. Yeah, the store is run by Adolf Hitler because that's the store that sells. Look, is that a, is that a swastika sticker on that jacket over there in the back? Uh, could be. Store run by Hitler here who, who sells monster costumes to bratty ass little kids so they can go off and scare everybody. What a wonderful story in the middle of this monster's comic book. A break from the story we were reading. And we move on with this. <sighs> we're little kids sending their art. And we put it in the comic book. Isn't that so cool? Some of these little, 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 little kids can draw. And draw they will, and draw they will. I think Michael Marone drew that one, Yoshi drew that one, and Kenny drew that one. Kenny drew that one because it kind of favors his dad working at 7-Eleven. Uh, okay, and we get some more really cool pictures. Draw by little kids, the fans of this comic book. I wonder when they started that. And then you could buy all these really cool Barbie fashions if you were a little girl. And I'm sure a little girl was reading a Munster's comic book back in 1968. Uh, I'll have to ask some old lady when I see her if she read this stuff back in 68. And that was all the Barbie fashions you could get back in, I think, 68. And then we get a ton of jokes. Yep, there they are rolling through. You can take time and read them. And how do you get a dog to stop barking in the street? Put him in a barking lot. Oh, my God. I will not be reading these. You can pause it and read these lame jokes if you want to. Sounds like something you might hear. On a wrestling live stream. <laughs>
Anyway, then we get the Creepy Crusade. They're back in business. Herman Meister and Lily, they're on the ice flow. And they're rolling around, and she's wearing her thick jacket because it's cold, and I'm, dead people get cold, right? And I thought she, I thought she had ice water in her veins. Well, anyway, he puts up a cell, and they get her moving on. They headed across the strait, but Grandpa got a killer head start. Remember, flying car. Well, while Herman's selling away, trying to cross the straits, Pa decided to take a landing across the border. Now, why the hell did he fly on across it? Yes, I guess he ran out of flying juice. Anyway. Grandpa comes up on the border of Russia, and they're giving him a hard time, but he's going to use that. He's going to use that vampire stuff. He's going to use that Jedi mind trick. You know, the one the vampires use. Make the, make, the, make the guards, make the little guards of Russian people. Make them his bitch. It's true. He made the Russian soldiers his bitch. Boy, I bet the people in Ukraine could use some of that vampire technology right now. Oh, did I say that? Anyway, it looks like they're bowing down to him. And then some weird hooded figure says, Grandpa? Oh, no, Herman's caught up with him already because he's taking time to hang out with the Russian soldiers, apparently. Oh, and full panels brought to you by the Daily Dan Blog. I bring you the monsters from 1968 in one of the longest freaking comic books I've ever reviewed. Maybe it's time to call up the sponsors. That's right, YouTube. Comic book reviews on the Daddy Dan blog are sponsored by Ruts. Wonderful THC injected edibles. Helps make the day go a little bit slower. Mm. It's why Daddy Dan calls the good stuff. Mm. These are definitely my favorites. Wow, they're really good. And they're tasty, too. 600 milligrams of infused goodness from Ruts. Your edible connection. All products available by mail. So back to the big race. Yes, well, I'm feeling a lot better now, boys and girls. Wow, it took a few seconds. We've been on pause for quite a few minutes while I, while I sucked down a edible infused with TAC and got my mood a little bit better. They go straight to the head and make you feel wonderful. Lily and Herman show up. He throws his passport out. One guy's checking it. When he pulls off the thing, they see that mug looking like Michael Marone had sex with, well, never mind, looking like Michael Marone's face. And, and, and he scares them to death. And some of them run off in panic and they run down the hill. They take this time to hit the cars and Herman and Lily and Grandpa and his crew speed away in their Fiery hot rods. Fiery hot rods, is that a word? And the Russian soldiers are left like the Russian soldiers usually are. Confused, disgruntled, not knowing what to do, and late for the chase with some stolen vehicles. Ain't it funny things ain't changed much since 1968? Oh, my God. I don't know why the hell these Russian pirate-looking guys are just hanging out by the dock waiting on a boat as the car races over the bridge. That's about the only thing you ever see happening. They're being chased by the Russians as they go neck and neck. And Grandpa lets somebody else take the wheel. He turned into a bat. He flies it up in people's faces, causing cars to wreck as Herman speeds away and crosses the Russian border. Yeah. I wonder who held a wheel on that other car. Anyway, Herman, Herman and Lily roar forth across the bridge, and they roll it by what looks like some kind of Italian tower. And then I see Pizzeria, and I'm thinking they're in Italy now. So, is Italy border Russia? No, I don't think Italy borders Russia, but I, guess, I thought the Carpathian Mountains, where Transylvania was, did border Russia. I guess they're making a detour, as the monsters always do, down through Italy. What? Ah, uh, maybe whoever wrote this comic book and drew the pictures and everything and never heard of geography did not know where countries were located. Uh, I'm a stickler for details, I know. So as they raced around the long way to Transylvania, maybe they just had to get the hell out of Russia and they took an early route. And I don't know, I'm not going to try to figure out a Mustard's comic book for detail. Anyway, they go by that leaning tower of Pisa. I guess they're going to hit a few of the tourist attractions. Uh, 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 uh. 
Uh, it'd be funny if Herman straightened it up, didn't he? But he did. He didn't go straightening it up. He should. He should have straightened it up for him. That'd have been funny. Anyway, my grandpa has got the rest of the crew. They rolling along in the jalapia thing on my jigger. Is that from the TV show or not? Grandpa decided to stop and pop up a potion, which goes the usual grandpa way, zippity zappity bam. Must be going to make that damn thing fly again. How did I know? How did I know? Like having a bat. In your tank. Anyway, they fly along for a little while. They land up here later on, and of course, then they're attacked by a tree monster vine thing. Because in the real world, tree monster vine things always attack your cars, and Grandpa going to cut it with a simple pocket knife. As Lily and Herman took a better route, and they're just speeding around through the countryside, heading on downtown. Well, Grandpa's got there and cut the fucking tree monster. Oh, God. Cut the tree monster down. And now he's got the tree monster in the back of the car. I'm just going to have a salad somewhere down the road. Lily and Herman are just rolling on along. Do, 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 do. And the wolf man and his son was getting ready to, what the hell? Waiting on them to get there, I guess. Yeah. And now they're coming up and they're getting the finish line ready because the wolf man and the wolf man's son is waiting on the castle in Transylvania to greet the monsters. I guess he's in the family too, right? And from opposite sides, they both approach. Grandpa and the vine crew, Lily and Herman in the Dragula vehicle. They heading up the hill to the castle and crash! They bumper to bumper, they meet at the front door. It's, it's a tie. In wonderful monsters fashion, nobody wins and it's a tie. What a great story. It's a monster story. What would you expect, you know? It's not going to be nothing grand. And they did get a couple little details a little on the off side, I think. Well, anyway, everybody's all happy to see them where we'll throw a party. And I guess it's time for them to play the monster match at the end of this story. Herman is now at the end. Apparently going to blow up his tire. Ah, like he did on the front. Remember, he had that blow up that tire, and everybody's going to laugh at Herman and kiss him the ground because he's glad to be back in Transylvania. Oh, my God, now I finally got through that. And then you get a mini-comic where this asshole can't sleep. And, and, and that's like me trying to sleep up and down and all around, bouncing off the floors, going to watch TV, watching some YouTube, and finally falling asleep. That's right, finally falling asleep, watching a Steve Callan video, because that's all it takes to put you to sleep. And on the last page of the book, you get a little mind's eye cartoon for the soul. Sees all, tells all the secrets of your future. They got this little machine from outer space looking, alien looking thing, and you put your little question in it, and it spits out the answer. Oh, isn't that special? In a one page cartoon. Can you see what it says? I'm not going to read it. Ah! They probably shouldn't have read it. Anyway, uh, and it comes out like this, and it's a Kabbalah transagram, and you can actually freaking order this thing. What the heck? Uh, I didn't know that. And then you get this, I had for the Roman soldiers in the back, where a bunch of guys dressed like they're in a condom commercial and do battle. Uh, I guess that's kind of cool. I had the little army soldiers and the little Confederate soldiers. I never don't think I got the Roman ones. I don't remember them. Uh, I probably didn't like the way they dressed. And of course, back on comic books in 1968, you know they're going to put a gun commercial on the back so you can shoot your bloody eye out. So that's my look at the monsters, number 16. From 1968, a gold key comic book with a great Herman Monster cover, but it's the only one I've got from the 1960s collection. The other two I got were 97s, and while I was happy with the cover, it wasn't like having an original Monsters comic book, you know what I mean? Well, now I've got one, and I just decided to go ahead, put the Witch and Armor on hold this week, and go ahead and do this Monsters comic book so I could get this glorious thing on my wall. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Be sure to join me for my next videos. And until next time, blog over, guys. Blog over.